Good morning. Welcome to Meets Rod Shop. I'm Jason. This morning it's a little different. We're not working on anything uh, really custom or hot rods or anything like that, but instead I've got my trusty 2001 F250 with a 7.3 liter in the shop. Um, I've got a uh, unit bearing that's going out on the front end of this truck. Um, the one thing I got to tell you about my truck is it does have the Dana 60. I do not have a Dana 50 in the front of this truck. I know a lot of people are screaming that the 2001s only came with a Dana 50. Um, this truck was a two wheel drive truck and I switched it over to a, a four wheel drive setup. So I've actually got the front suspension out of a 2002 truck, which is a Dana 60 front end. But uh, we're gonna go through yanking off the, uh, the hubs, which I do run the G2 aftermarket hubs on this truck. Um, and we'll get the unit bearing out and I'll just walk you through it. But I'll put a parts list here in a second to kind of tell you what you're going to need to get this done. No real specialty tools other than you will need a set of snap ring pliers. But uh, let's go ahead and we'll get down to it and get it started. All right, first things first, what you want to do is you want to snap off your hub cover. Just comes off real quick. Use a little uh, screwdriver or pry bar. And then what I'll do, it's a, uh, my lug nuts are 21 millimeter. I'll go ahead and I'll break them loose while I'm on the ground. Go ahead and jack the front end up. Make sure you got a jack stand up underneath the axle. All right, once you got the truck uh, sitting up on a jack stand, you're ready to rip the wheel off. Go ahead and zing off all your lug nuts. Again, these are 21 millimeter. Slide the wheel off, roll it out of your way. This is a fairly quick repair um, for those of us that live in the south. I know uh, you northern guys are probably screaming, um, but we don't have a whole lot of rust, so we don't get a lot of rusty bolts down here. But you should be able to do this in 30, 45 minutes, um, as long as your hub's not stuck inside the axle or nothing like that. But uh, next thing we'll go ahead and we'll take off this G2 hub. The G2 hub uses a Torx tip T15 bolts to hold them in. And I will tell you, I am not a fan of these. Um, if you originally installed these and didn't put anti-seize around the head of the bolt or the head of the screws that hold this thing in here, you're gonna strip probably half of them out trying to get them out of this hub. Um, that's one of my complaints with these G2s. But uh, they're nice enough, I will say, their support group, uh, I called G2 a while back when I had a hub problem and I had to drill out two of these screws. They'll send you a pack. Just show them, a, send them a picture, email them a picture of, uh, of the strip screw where you had to drill it out and uh, they'll go ahead and they'll just send you a pack of screws for free. So I think they know they got a problem there, but uh, easy thing to do when you're putting them back in, which I'll show you when we get to that, is put some anti-seize around the outside of the head where it grabs the hub and um, that should fix your problem. So we'll go ahead, don't use an impact gun getting these uh, off or um, tightening them down. Use a wrench, that way you're not stripping that little T15 screw out. All right, so in these little holes here, you'll see where there's a Torx, T15 Torx. Oh, that one's one of the ones I already drilled out, so. Once you break them loose, then you can put the impact on them to go ahead and uh, zing them out real quick. But you can see, it's like a little wedge style screw, 
Torx tip T15. And you can see where I've actually put anti-seize right around the, the outside of the tip of the head there. That way they won't lock in that hub. But go ahead and zing them all out. and then just pull the hub off. Now, right inside here, you'll see this little, there's a little snap ring that rides right around in here. I'll try and get you closer. Let me see if I can't zoom in. But right around this hub here, you'll see there's a little snap ring that rides around. That's actually what keeps this hub inside. So we'll go ahead and we'll pop the snap ring off and then we can pull the inner part of the hub out. You just use a small flat tip screwdriver. Let me see if I can slide it around. There we go. snap ring and there's the inner hub I did just have these apart uh, a couple weeks ago um, diagnosing a bearing issue um, the passenger side was worse so that's why this is all cleaned up but set it to the side and now down inside of here you can just kind of see it right here there's that little snap ring that you're gonna have to get out so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna get my snap ring pliers and we'll pop that out real quick So there's your snap ring. This is what holds the axle tight in the hub. You see it there. Um, go ahead, yank that out. Now that axle's free. There is a few washers in there you gotta get out as well. Try and keep everything clean. You don't wanna get a whole lot of trash sitting inside your hub in there. But you'll see these stacked washers in here. There is an inner. So you got the inner washer. You've got like a middle plastic uh, bushing here. And then you got the outer washer. So keep those together like that. Place them to the side. All right, next thing, we're going to move to getting the caliper off, the caliper bracket, and the uh, rotor. I believe these are an 18 millimeter bolt on the back side here that um, holds on the uh, caliper and I believe it's a 21 millimeter bolt that holds on the caliper bracket. So let's go ahead. We'll bring you in there. I'll show you that real quick. So back here you can see you've got your caliper here and you got this caliper mounting bolt right here. I'm trying to get you a better shot but there's the top caliper mounting bolt. That is an 18 millimeter if my memory serves me correctly. Let me double check. Ooh, it might be a 17. All right, so you're, I was incorrect. Your caliper mounting bolts, you got a top. And then down here, let me see if I can get to it. You've got the, the bottom one here. It's kind of hard to see. Those are 17 millimeter. Now the caliper mounting bracket is a 21. So you've got your top one here, then you've got one right down here. It's hard to see, but you've got 21 millimeter here as well. And on as well as that, one other bolt you're gonna have to take out is your um, ABS bracket mounting bolt, which is, let me if I can hold this here without getting it in the camera frame. You can see here, uh, mine's just an Allen screw. I'm not sure what size is, but I've seen uh, eight millimeter bolts holding these in. I've seen these Allen head screws. It depends on, I guess, how your truck was assembled. Um, but, uh, so that's what you got. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rip this caliper off first. All right, so uh, 
here we go. One thing you want to do before you take your caliper off is I like to compress the pistons in there. That way it makes it a little easier when it goes to go back on. I'm not messing around trying to fit the pads and everything over the rotor. It doesn't take but a quick second. Go ahead and just give a couple twists on the old C-clamp there and that will press in those um, pucks on your caliper and make it easier to get it off and a lot easier to put it back on. So we've done that. Go ahead and set your C-clamp aside. Before you take your caliper off, you want to get a piece of safety wire or like I use these little stainless S clips here so I can hang my, um, I'll hang my uh, caliper off of this hook and hang it up off the frame. That way you're not leaving your uh, caliper, you know, hanging on this hose here because that hose will be, you can screw the hose up that way. And as we all know, you don't want to screw your hose up. So go ahead again, it's a 17 millimeter, millimeter, uh, 17 millimeter screw or bolt here. Go ahead and pop it loose. There's a second. So again, just take your S-hook here, put it through the caliper mounting bolt, and then what I'll do is I'll hang it up off of the bracket that the hose actually hangs on. So as you can see, my hose isn't you know, holding the, the caliper up. So now we'll go ahead and we'll get that Allen headed bolt out there. And I have no idea what size that is. So let's see. All right. Looks to be that it is a metric five, at least on mine. As like I said, I've seen um, eight millimeter headed bolts on there. This is a metric number five Allen head. I'll go ahead and get that out, get your ABS um, cord disconnected there and you might as well go ahead while you're doing this because that ABS um, wire, you have to disconnect the whole thing. You might as well go ahead and get the whole thing uh, ready to go you are going to have to replace that with that unit bearing so go ahead detach it from the frame and then a little clip here just there you go so now it's disconnected and we're ready to go ahead and we're ready to pull this caliper bracket off you don't have to pull the pads off you can leave the brake pads in the caliper bracket which is what i like to do just for simplicity so let's go ahead and we'll get that caliper uh, mounting bracket off these are usually pretty torqued on there. So 21 millimeter headed bolt that holds that caliper bracket on. That's the top bolt there. So there's the bottom bolt. As you can see, it's got anti-seize on it. You always anti-seize anti those when you're going uh, back in with them, especially you guys up in the north, anywhere there's salt corrosion. Otherwise, you'll have a heck of a time getting them off the next time. As they say, 60% of the time it works every time. All right, there's a second bolt. Just go ahead and slide your caliper bracket off. And you see, I got plenty of meat left on these pads. Um, I did a brake uh, job on this truck a little while ago, so my brakes are good. All right, now you got your caliper bracket off, you can go ahead and take your brake rotor off. All right, so now you're down to your hub. Um, how we're gonna do this now on the back side of this, and I'll get you in here, we'll 
show you. There's four 21 millimeter nuts that you're gonna have to loosen to slide this hub out. And remember, we've got the snap rings off, we've got the hub off, we've got our analog brake uh, wiring disconnected. So we're ready once I get those four nuts off to slide this hub out. Let's get you in there so we can see that. So in here, you can kind of see that, that nut sitting there. If I can get you a good sign, there's that nut right there. So you've got, man, it's hard to, hard to get in there and show you, but in here you can see there's one of those nuts. There's one there on the front, one right here on the front bottom. Let's flip you around to the back side. And then on the back side, you can see there's one. Oh man, maybe you can't see it, but there's one right here. You can just barely see it. And then up top here, you can, let me show you here. I'm trying to hold the light in the camera for you is tough. And then there's another one right here. So, all right, but where those nuts are, um, I showed you on the smaller camera, but on the main camera, they're basically right through here. One here, one here, one here, and one here, but it's on the back side of the hub. And it's gonna take a 21 millimeter uh, deep well to get them in there. So let's go ahead. I wish I had a better camera angle for you, but uh, I don't know where my small tripod is. So there's one of the nuts. You're gonna to have to save these. Do not throw these nuts away. You will need these for the replacement hub. There we go. All right, so last nuts off. Now we can go ahead and we can slide this hub out. There we go. The hub is out. Go ahead and take your dust shield off. So you get your dust shield off, just slide your analog brake, bracket back through there, set this to the side. All right, well now the fun begins. Now let's go ahead and we'll prep the new hub to get installed on here. All right, one thing I wanna talk about before we put this new hub back in there. Um, this is the second set of hubs I've gone through, or wheel unit bearings, I keep saying hub, wheel hub, whatever you wanna call it, but it's a unit bearing is the actual correct term. But this is the second set of unit hubs or unit bearings I've gone through on this Dana 60. Um, I tried, uh, uh, the first set was just the, the regular old parts store, you know, made in China uh, unit bearings. Those didn't last very long. Um, this uh, was actually a Moog unit, which is slightly better, but still made in China, and it didn't last that long. Um, so this time around, I went and did the right thing for once, and I bought a Timkin. The part number on this is 515020, and the big thing you want to see here, made in the USA. So that's a good USA made bearing. It should last for a while. So let's go ahead and we'll get it unpacked. Um, it comes with a new O-ring in this kit. So you've got an O-ring that you need to put around the hub where it slides or around the unit bearing where it slides into the axle flange. And then it comes with uh, four new studs. That uh, screw into the back of the uh, unit bearing that hold it to the axle. Um, from what I can tell, both threaded sides are the same length so it doesn't really matter which way you screw these into the hub 
but I do red Loctite these into the hub because I want the nut coming off of these. I don't want the stud coming out if I have to go back in there and service this, which uh, for the record, Ford recommends servicing the inner bearing, which I'll show you here, we're about to grease it. There's an inner bearing here that you have to grease every 60,000 miles. And the nice thing about that is you have to pull the hub back out to do it or the unit bearing back out to do it. I've seen guys get in there with needles and squirt grease in there and maybe that works, but you know, the safest way to do it is to go ahead and take the unit bearing back out. There is the unit bearing out of the box. You see this red cap? That is protecting the inner bearing. Uh, Timkin on this one anyway, they did pre-grease this. Not every manufacturer does that. We're gonna cram more grease in here anyway. This is the little uh, roller bearing that your axle stub actually rolls on. So you need to make sure this is really well greased. So I'm gonna get some, some grease here and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pack this in there. And then that uh, O-ring actually goes around. There's a, you can see a milled um, recess here where that o-ring goes in this is the part that slides into the axle so let's go ahead and we'll get some grease crammed in here real quick and all i do is i just take them in there with my finger and just rub it around move them around real good make sure they're good and luby dubed up so it gets got some good grease here go ahead and really smear it in there good make sure you you get your finger in there and spin those roller bearings you know lube it up and then i'll take a liberal amount of grease and i'll apply it to this uh anti-lock brake um, flange as well. You want to grease the face of this too. Don't be afraid to use the grease. There's no such thing as too much grease on one of these. All right, so that's a good coating. We're gonna get that O-ring. We'll slip that O-ring over here. We'll lube that up as well. And then we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll lock tight the studs into here. All right, now I've gone ahead and I've put red Loctite on one end of the thread on the studs. Go ahead and thread them into the unit bearing. And what that does is, like I said, that'll lock that stud into that unit bearing so that uh, when you're taking them out the next time around, the, the nut doesn't pull the stud out. The nut will come off of the stud because it should be locked into the hub. So go ahead and do that to all four of these and then we'll clean up that hub and we'll get ready or the, the, the area where the hub's gonna go into the axle and then we'll go ahead and we'll slide that in. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock tight the rest of these in. All right, as you can see, I've got that yellow O-rings placed on there. I've got everything lubed up. I've Loctited my studs in there. The last step I'll do before I actually install this unit bearing into the hub, as you'll see the shank portion of these studs, I uh, go ahead and I anti-seize them. You ain't got to use a whole lot, but, uh, you know, just coat them up real good. You want to get the threads where the nut's going to go to um, anti-seize those. But just place a, you know, nice coating anti-seize on all this. Uh, especially you northern guys because trust me next time you do this you will be glad you did because these will get locked into that axle flange um or the the uh what you, what you want to call it the uh uh shoot anyway these will just get locked into the axle if uh, if you don't do this where you get a lot of salt and corrosion on the, on the road so go ahead and do these up pretty good like i said you'll you'll thank me or you'll thank yourself for doing it if you ever got to take these back apart. And like I said, you're supposed to be servicing these, these bearings every 60,000 miles, the inner bearing for the stub shaft. Although I, I don't, many don't know many people that do, but uh, you're supposed to anyway. We'll go ahead and I seize the crap out of these. Nice thing about anti seize too, as soon as you open the can, I can have somebody open the can, you know, half a mile away and somehow I get it on me. I don't know, uh, I don't know how that works. It's law of physics, I guess. So I usually come out looking like the Tin Man when I get done messing with this stuff. All right, we're ready then. So I've cleaned out the hub. Um, I place a uh, around the face on the inside of the uh, um, where the hub goes and uh, spindle. There's the word. So on the inside of the spindle where this hub goes, I'll show you on the camera here in a minute. I apply more anti-seize to the face of it and to a little bit on the inside so that way it doesn't lock itself or rust itself to the spindle when you go to yank this thing out. So let's go ahead and we'll get resituated. All right, so you, as you can see here, you got the knuckle, the spindle, whatever you want to call it. I guess knuckle's the correct term, but I'm going to spread some anti-seize around the face of the knuckle and also around the inside of this cavity just along the, the uh, inner edge where that uh, um, unit bearing is going to slide into. You might want to put some 
inside the bolt holes a little bit even though you you went ahead and you already did the studs it can't hurt you know better to have more than less that's for sure don't have to do a whole lot just a thin coat so and then I'll go ahead and like I said just spread it around the inside a little bit there I probably got enough grease in there I ain't got to worry about it but better be safe than sorry so all right we're ready so go ahead remember you want your uh, your brake bracket your brake bracket goes on this way and then your ABS sensor goes on top so go ahead and get that ready so you've got your brake bracket on you got your ABS sensor at the top go ahead slide it all together get it pressed in there make sure your ABS brackets excuse me ABS cables not uh, pinched and go ahead and start your four nuts so now you may want to go ahead and put a little anti-seize around the face of these nuts it's not a bad idea to do so like again you don't need a lot just a little a little dab will do you most of you guys probably don't remember that commercial but go ahead and reach in the back there start your nuts and go ahead and assemble it in reverse order all right now i got all four nuts started you want to go ahead and torque these down i'll be honest with you i don't know what the torque is i've never looked it up i tighten them down to the creek though you know i mean i want these things i want these things tight so i smoke them down and i also do it in a cross pattern you know make sure that hub seats in there even Again, I torque these things down until you feel your back creak. You want them tight, you don't want them backing out. Now that you got the four nuts tight so your hub is actually it's bolted down all the way you know make sure it still spins which it should because that don't have anything to do with this but what i'll do now is i'll go ahead and i'll place my three washers in here and i'll do my snap ring and the reason why is you may have to pry on the inner axle stub to get it out far enough so that the snap ring will engage those uh 
engage the uh, race properly. So again, so you get your three washers. The uh, nut looking one goes in the middle. Make sure they got some good grease on them, you know. Grease them up a little bit. Go ahead and slide them over the axle. Inner axle stub like that, all right. So now you gotta look in there and you'll probably see more than likely that the snap ring recess is too far in. So this is where you're gonna get your pry bar and you're gonna pry on the back side of this axle stub and pull it out towards the outside of the axle so you can get that snap ring in there. It's best to go ahead and place your snap ring around the axle first. That way it's just easier to push on to the uh, race. So go ahead and get that snap ring in there. Get your screwdriver, place it in there, press the snap ring in as far as you can. Let's see if you can get in there and see. You probably can't, but that snap ring, let's see if we can't zoom in there. So there's that snap ring I'm talking about, and it's not in all the way. So I'm going to pry on this axle shaft a little bit so I can get it to pop in properly. Need my longer pry bar for that. And of course, by pry bar, I mean long screwdriver. So let's go ahead, we'll zoom back out, show you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna slide this long screwdriver pry bar thingy into the back here so that I can push this, you'll watch this axle move a little bit. See how the axle moves? There you go. Now it should be enough to, where that snap ring wants to snap in there. There, it snapped in. So there you go. That was easy. For once. And you can see the snap ring is seated in that groove now. So we're good to go. So now what we'll do, now that the snap ring's installed, it's in the race, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move back to hooking up the ABS wire and getting the brakes installed the rest of the way. All right, let's go. So you got your, your little plastic bracket here. Go ahead and place that over where it was. I got my five millimeter headed metric bolt. Thread that in, maybe. Come on, can't seem to find the hole. I'm gonna put a little hair around it. There we go. I'll go ahead and we'll torque that down to German torque. That's good and tight for those of you that don't know. So, all right. So she's torqued down, so that ABS bracket or cable is ready to be uh, hooked up, which we'll hook that up once we get the brakes back on. So go ahead, make sure your hub's clean. Um, you may wanna take a little bit of anti-seas and just smear it around on the hub where the wheel sits, you know, where the brake rotor sits. It's never a bad idea. You don't need to do a whole lot, but just a little. Again, you Northern State guys, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you'll have that brake rotor get locked in here. So this helps helps quite a bit. Make sure to get around the wheel flange too. You know, the inside of the bracket or inside of the here. Again, you're not doing a whole lot, just a little. Just enough to stop it from seizing in there. Your mechanic or the next guy that owns the truck or has to do anything with this hub, will, again, he'll thank you. So. Go ahead, grab that rotor. We'll sling the rotor on. There's a brake rotor. Get your rotor placed up on there. Now we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna grab that disc brake bracket that we took off earlier. We're gonna place that over there. Again, take your take your mounting bolts. Put some anti-seize on the threads. You know, around the shank of it. That way it don't get locked in there.
one thing while you've got your bracket off you want to check these and make sure that they're lubed up um, it's got some schmutz on mine but uh, go ahead this is what this is is this is the caliper bracket or excuse me caliper pin guide pin so you know make sure they're loose and they don't they're not sticky you know that way they uh, caliper will move correctly so go ahead place it over the rotor go ahead and torque these down again I apologize I don't have the torque on these they're just uh, for me as tight as I can get them you don't want that uh, you don't want that caliper bracket getting loose and coming out of there. I have had those bol bolts back out before after somebody did a uh, brake job. So I'll make sure they're nice and torqued. And again, 21 millimeter bolt head. Ding, fries are done. Again, like I said, I smoke these down. Probably shouldn't, but I do. All right. Now we're ready for the uh, brake caliper. Now my shield is loose on this, but we'll get it placed back on there properly. Well, maybe we won't. There it is. So I'll go ahead and pull my caliper off the hook. And we'll get this thing ready to go. Go ahead and get your caliper bolt started. You want to make sure there's a little, the caliper guide pin's got flat notches on it. You want to make sure it's placed in there properly. And I'll show you that here right now. You see it's got a flat spot right here. You want to make sure that flat spot rides in that machine portion. That way you know it's set up right. So when you're putting those in there, make sure that the machine part fits properly, top and bottom. I'll go ahead and torque your caliper bolts down good and tight. Again, I don't smoke them down, but I put them real dang snug. And again, it's a seven millimeter headed bolt. So now remember, don't just drive away. Make sure pump your brakes a couple times before you start the truck and try to drive because this caliper's expanded right now because remember we pressed in the pistons before we took it off. Matter of fact, I'll do that right now while I'm thinking about it. All right, so now we're gonna place the inner part of the G2 hub in there. Um, again, NICs, I like to use uh, good wheel bearing grease. I'll go all around the edge of this thing so it doesn't get locked in there. Gives a little bit of protection, a little bit of looby doob um, You know, I'll do the, the back face of it, the inner splines, all that. So go ahead, once you do that, just get her in there. Once she's lined up, or once she's once the inner hub's in there, just take that snap ring. If you remember, we took out at the beginning. Place her in there. She's locked in. All right, so that hub's good. So now all you got to do is is put the uh, the outer hub back on. Which, again, remember those bolts I was telling you about. Here's these bolts here. Now I've got two brand new bolts since I stripped out the other ones. But here's that bolt, and you want to place anti-seize around this bolt right around the head. You can go ahead and put a little bit on the threads too if you want, but you want to really anti-seize these up. Otherwise, trust me, they will lock in there and you will strip them out because they're just a little TX-15 screw. So go ahead, you want to drop one in the hole so you got the screw sticking through 
line it up make sure your o-ring don't pop off like mine just did line them up go ahead and get your uh, get your screw gun ready again I don't run them in all the way with this I'll just start them okay so you just get it started that should line up the rest but go ahead and get your anises out and I seize the crap out of these screws they are pain in the ass like I said get it lined up go ahead and start it and there you go I'll go ahead and do the rest again this is messy but unfortunately it needs to be done with these all right then once you got them ran down go ahead and take a screwdriver and torque them down by hand i don't uh, you know I, I don't i smoke them in by hand don't get me wrong but if you're doing that it better be with a screwdriver not with something that's got leverage because like again these things are they're only a tx15 there ain't a whole lot of meat there to grab in the head so that's what she said i mean i don't i don't go crazy with them i'll tell you that All right, so that's it. Make sure it's on free. You may want to make sure it does go over to lock and back, but uh, you know, spin them. Make sure go to lock. Make sure it locks your axle up. It does. Back to free. Back them off. All right, we're ready to go ahead and we're gonna hook up this ABS wiring. So for this ABS wiring, just follow the same route that you had before. You may have to slide these rubber grommets a little bit or slide the bracket on the uh, old uh, brake hose there but go ahead snap them in go ahead wherever your abs look up went there's mine go ahead and snap it on in there you're done i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna zip tie this up in there since my looks like my bracket broke but We'll go ahead and zip ties in there. We're ready to throw that wheel back on. All right, now that you got the ABS hooked back up, you've got the cable ran, put a little bit of NICs along the face of your brake hub here so that your wheel doesn't seize to it. And again, you want a little bit around the edge. This will uh, save you northern guys again. And this truck, believe it or not, does see time in northern and southern Michigan. I go up there every year for hunting season and four-wheeling trips and whatnot. So this truck does see some salt up there, unfortunately. But that's how it goes. And I can't afford to buy a new one. So I like to I keep my old junk running. So I work on it quite a bit. Now, this truck's pretty much low mileage. It's only got 225,000 miles on it which ain't nothing for a power stroke, but uh, we'll go ahead, we'll get this wheel put back on and we'll get trucking. All right, go ahead and let her down, you're done. All right, kids, that's it for me to shop today. Um, thanks for checking out this video. Like I said, this was putting on uh, G2 hubs, manual locking hubs, uh, replacing the unit bearing on the front end of my 2001 F250 7.3 liter uh, with a Dana 60. Um, this also applies to excursions, um, other F250s, of course, 350s with the Dana 60 or the Dana 50 front end. Um, so it's, like I said, simple swap. I'll put a list of the hand tools in at the beginning. Uh, again, I appreciate you checking it out. You have a good day, and uh, remember, keep your head up and your stick on the ice.